If you're touching a steering wheel or have a grip on a handle of a lawnmower, uh, you feel the vibration of the machine. But actually this is not true. You don't feel the vibration, this is impossible. What you feel is the displacement of this part caused by the acceleration. Okay, So it's quite common to calculate the displacement by measuring the acceleration at this point with some accelerometers and then calculate it by integrating the signal twice. Sounds easy, it's logic, it's physical, it's good. But you can make some errors on this mathematic process. I will do these typical errors just for you, lava me, and then I'll show you what to do right. Furthermore, I'll show you how to interpret this integrated data and how to display it, plot it in a nice diagram. Okay, so watch this tutorial and you get excellent integration results. Jump straight in. I will explain the integration process using this measurement, RAC01 Unbalanced. If you do not have this measurement yet, you can download this by following the link in the description box. But actually it means you missed a great tutorial about NVH analysis. <laughs> Whatever, it's still there. To explain it, I'd just like to focus on one direction. I use the Y direction. We don't use any of these filters we used in the previous videos we want to integrate. So we insert our um, integration option here. And to compare, of course, I also insert a bypass. So we have two ways, just normally, just a pure time data, the accelerometer signal, and then we integrate. But we don't want to integrate only one time, we want to have a displacement, so have to be integrated twice. So the settings are here always on the property page. Um, we can control of course, all channels because we only selected one. Um, so we're counting up to two. And here it said integration twice. Just keep the default setting first and want to see how it works. Um, no analysis, no statistic package, just pure time data in the data viewer. Because the only difference in this calculation is done in the filter pool. Of course, I like to have in my legend the information what has happened in the filter pool. So I add just from the pool project filter, uh, filter name with the parameters. It's in there. Okay, that's fine. And we calculate. So we have two results. This is the pure time data, the green one, the bypass. And in red, we have the integration. Let's go in detail where are the differences. Or the high frequency content is gone. Let's start here. Here we are at a certain point and the acceleration signal is negative. That's why we go down, down, down and all the way up. From this point on the acceleration is positive. So we break in this point and go back again and the acceleration goes on the other side so we break again. So this is this motion that we have on the handle. Okay, But the high frequency seems to be totally off. I only see the big frequency. And this is the first important effect we need to understand. Integration works like a low pass filter. High frequency are vanished. Why is it this way? Um, I've explained it with me. If I am part of, of the handle, a metal part, and I move in different frequency, maybe at low and high frequency at the same time. If I move in with low frequency, maybe a half hertz. So I go there and say, let's go, okay. And then after a while someone would say, hey, we have to go back. Oh, sorry. Okay, now we go this direction. Up, up, up. No, 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 change the direction again. Again, like this, okay? So you move quite forward and backward because you're changing slowly the direction. Same part, same energy, but now I'm working at 1000 Hertz. <laughs> okay, move there, move there, move there, move there, move there, what, 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 what? A lot of energy, but I don't move anything because if you're changing always the direction, you never get far, okay? Keep this in mind. That's the reason why in the previous video we see that the WH function only, co only concentrate on low frequency because only low frequency is what you feel, okay? It's the same effect you see on integration. We can see it directly if I just add an FFT analysis with no weighting function in there. You see, high frequency content is in there in the bypass on the acceleration, but it's not there in the integration. It starts here at 100 hertz and yet 50 hertz it gets a high speed. And at really low frequency, there is no vibration. But if you integrate it, you see high levels. Okay, keep this in mind, it's important. I mark this data viewer as a three. 
So let's do some errors on the integration process. Uh, let's go for the settings. Um, high pass? I don't need high pass. I just have a low pass effect. It's a enough effect for me. So it switches off. And what we else have, if we look in the data, um, the full signal is definitely too long. I'm not interested in the moment before the engine starts or after the engine stops again. So I'm only interested in the middle part, so from three to seven seconds. This I like to integrate. So I go for my measurements, open the mark editor and say, just calculate here from three seconds, maybe up to seven seconds. There I keep the focus, okay? And integrate one more time. No analysis, just a pure time now. Let's see what we're doing here. What is that? This is my vibration signal, it's fine, but my displacement is completely weird. There's no vibration at all. First error, we start integration at any point in the measurement. But this is an undefined situation. Maybe your velocity or your vibration is on a really high level and you start from that point on start integration. So there's an offset and this offset will always be integrated and it goes up to the sky. That's what we see. So not clever. You should have a defined situation. Probably this is zero and then start the integration process. Let's see, we come up to a length of 26 centimeters after seven seconds. So first error would be not start at two seconds. Um, start here where there's nothing inside. So the recording started but the engine is still quiet, okay? No more changes and recalc again. Now we see it's getting a little bit better. In the beginning we see some signals but in the end it still jumps up but not that high. Just even at seven seconds and we have a longer time period of integration, we only come up to the half of the level. The first error is out, okay? Second error, we take off the high pass filter. Not good. As we know, low frequency brings it up. Our signal is still there. If you zoom in really decently on this part, you see there is still our signal. That's what we want to see. But it's completely overpowered by low frequencies. Of course, I move the lawnmower. There is some acceleration in this movement. And if there's a pothole, it also goes to the y direction. And this is such a low frequency and by the integration it will be too much. Okay, we are losing our signal. If you come back to our FFT analysis, we see that here at low frequency from one to five hertz, this is, this is not right, okay? This is just an artificial effect. Even the sensor is not that good at low frequencies, these small, tiny sensors here. So actually the first time I see there is a real value by the measurement starts here from 20 hertz. And we only want to focus on 50 hertz because this is my first order of the rotation. 3000 RPMs, first order because unbalanced, 50 hertz is my signal. So it's clever to say an offset, everything below, let me say 15 hertz is just crap, all right? So go back in the pool project, knowing this and say, okay, my integration process should have an absolute filter, now we know it, not two hertz, we say 15 hertz, okay? Everything below, take it off and then make the integration. So let's check the new integration settings by using still an FFT analysis in the data viewer. And yeah, we see this low frequency are broke down. So the information, 50 hertz, 100 hertz, this is what we want to see. This is the vibration we really feel. This has now the highest level and can be displayed. So we go back in the pool project and now I'm brave enough to say, I use X, Y and Z direction. We don't need the bypass anymore, everything's fine now. And no FFT analysis, just go straight in a data viewer. There we have the signal, zoom in, and that's what we see. X direction doesn't make anything, but the biggest level we have here in Z and in Y direction. And we see it's the same frequency, but there's a shift in between. It's not easy to interpret this data in this kind of graph. Actually, it doesn't make sense to display these displacements over time because the cycle repeats itself always the same. So where is my plus information? So the trick is not to display it over time. So display one graph over the other to get a full image. We call it X, Y plot, okay? Because it has two channels. So we go on the pool project and same analysis, same, same setup, but this time we put it in a report I just say we create a new one, start from nothing. Uh, so the data goes in here because we have some special diagrams. Take the default settings off and we have a 
by choice here. And this is the XY diagram. I'll just show it here. You ask you for to bind two similar channels, data binding. So this is the result we have just calculated. You don't go for the F1, the integration process. And here are all the three channels. So channel two is this Y direction for, and channel three is the Z direction. And there we get a nice and decent picture. Now we see the movement of our handle. We see it from zero up to the seven seconds we marked. Let's jump in. If I just zoom in with this mouse wheel and we control, I'm faster than that, you can concentrate maybe on the beginning of our lawnmower measurements. Here, for example, at the very start, we see this boof noise, it's the impact of the switch when we switch it on. But then the engine starts running and it's getting bigger and bigger. You see how the vibration causes higher and higher levels in the displacement. This is the process and then we are here. So we can see at about 2.8 seconds, yeah, then we reach the maximum target. Then we got a steady state, okay? And it repeats in quite always the same. And furthermore, I can see the shape. If it's a perfect module, the force of the unbalance will cause a circle. Huh? But this is not a circle. You see, this is the effect of your structure. And even there is a force excitation in a single circle movement, the structure interprets this in its own way. It's a lot of movement to the y direction and a little bit to the z direction as well and nothing to the x direction. This is interesting for you because this is a mode of the handle. Well, it's time for you maybe to think about mode shapes and what it is. I'll make some tutorials for that. It makes you also a professional mode shaper. Uh, just watch the eye. There's another thing how you can use this is uh, if I zoom in even much closer, you can even see what's happening during one cycle. Yeah, moving forward, backward. Oh, it reminds me a little bit on Snake, you know, this great game from the Nokia 303010. Well, it's a long time ago. And there's more. <laughs> you can use this XOI plot. It has a romantic part. Just look. If you watch these two ants and imagine that these two ants are two lovers who have lost each other on this wide area of space, you just have to score the wheel and then make the full way down again until they meet again in the middle. <laughs> it kills me. So you finished the eighth part of the Getting Started series. I'm impressed. If you're still hungry, uh, there's also a playlist with advanced acoustics. Just take a time. but. I kept going, okay? So you got the basics now. Go out and get your noise right.